So I'm going to go ahead and load the dining room scene and I'm going to put my marker down here where zero zero is. It places the scene exactly where I need it to be placed. So we have a new release coming out really soon that has quite a few updates in it. Viewer mode and place scene by marker. The first part of that is place scene by marker, which is basically one of these beautiful things. Um, so it works really well on iPad. Um, and effectively what you can do is you can set the zero zero of your scene on a marker. Why is this good? What is important? Well, if you are placing your scene in the real world where you're getting a mixed reality experience, so perhaps you're enhancing something that's already there, you're doing an architectural project and you're extending or you're removing walls or you're doing a landscaping project or you're doing uh, a previous for a film and you know you're going to be rendering it and walking through the experience on site, the easiest way to kind of set the center is gonna be using a marker. And this can be particularly valuable if your floor is not straight. Because right now we link everything to the floor. Apple detects the floor as a absolutely straight thing, which is fine indoors, but does not work very well outdoors. So if you're working on a slope, you can put your iPad on a slope and the, the scene will orientate to that slope. So it's actually really good to do this up front, do a little pre-recce, go, go to where you're gonna go, decide where you're gonna place the marker. And so that can be near a landmark, so near a lamppost or next to a tree. Just remember where you're gonna put it. Start a scene and then you can build your scene wherever, either on site or, or, or at your house and scale it down and build it all out. Then when you go back there, place the marker at the center of the scene and the app will automatically align it to that. We have a lot of our users that use the app at exhibitions. So the experience that the users are enjoying are at an event and you don't want to have to center it up every time. And when you take a headset off and move it, sometimes the scene moves. So this is a really good way to say, hey, before you start, just look at that icon, three, two, one, scene is placed. It's really powerful. And that leads me nicely into the second feature, which is viewer mode. And viewer mode is the, is the mode that is designed so that you don't have to go through the Apple eye training in, in guest mode, for example, to use the app. They just have a big button on their panel which says viewer mode and they go into that and they get a viewer centric design which does not care if their eyes are not trained because all of the buttons and everything is right by them. We, we programmatically display it by them and you're in full control as to what the user can and can't do with your scene. And I'll go into that in more detail now. I'm gonna walk you through the various things that you can do when preparing a scene to be set up for viewer mode. The first thing we're gonna be looking at is the object details panel. So this is one of the most important panels you'll have and, and you effectively, you can open this by double tapping on any object and you will open up the object details panel and the one that is selected is the one that you will get. Now, the object details panel will open by default alongside the object, like that, but I do find it easier to unpin it and place it where I'm working um, so that I can always refer back to it. it. You can move it wherever you want or you can pin it back to the object, in which case it will go back. The object details panel gives you everything you need to know about the object you've selected. So it gives you its scale, information so the percentage it's been scaled since it's been brought in and the size of it position in the scene since you've brought it in and its rotation in the scene since you've brought it in the x y and z uh, obviously relate to the three axes in space so if we've got this chair selected if i go ahead and move it and just lift it up we can see that the y axis is the green one uh, we've got z here in the blue axis, the X axis is here. This axis marker will display when the object is selected. So when you are setting up a scene for a viewer, there's a bunch of things you might want to do. This is a scene for my own house and it's got various elements in it. Now, some of them are fixed and immutable. Um, and when I'm showing them to the builder or when I'm showing them to any stakeholder, I don't want them to be able to change certain things. So for example, the ceiling, and the walls, they're immutable. But then there's elements like the furniture, or the plants, or the lighting op options. There's a piano over there that's currently hidden that I might want to allow users to turn on and off. I might even want them to move them and have the, the option to, to position them in case they want to say, well, actually, I'd rather have this light 
further over to the right or something like that. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to look at the asset panel. There's various things that I don't want the user to touch. So the ceiling is one of them. And so that is actually a cube that I've flattened and put on the top of the scene here. I don't want this this item to be available at all to my viewer users. So the way I'm, I hide it from them is I disable it. Any object that is disabled will not appear at all for viewer users. So I'm just going to disable that. Um, uh, there's a bit of cube over there that I've used to fill in the wall. I'm disabling that. Um, and then the main wall here, the dining room, no windows, which is this area, uh, I've also disabled. Um, I've also disabled all of the French doors because those things cannot be moved. They are immutable. When the menu loads up for that user, um, they will not see these. They will see them in the scene, but they will not be able to interact with them. They will not be able to move them and they will not be able to show or hide them. Then there's stuff that I might want to allow moving on. So let's, let's take this chair, for example. Perhaps I do want the user to position this chair, but what I don't want them to do is accidentally put it up or I don't want them to accidentally rotate it or, or scale it because I can do all of those things. There's a number of things we can do here that will allow object control for a user without giving them the opportunity to, to break the scene by rotating something in the wrong direction. So we've got the chair selected. So one thing I'm very happy with is the scale. I could lock each of these individually or I can just press the button, it locks everything. So that locks scaling off. Now, if it's locked off for me in this view, it'll be locked off for the viewer viewing it. I do want them to allow them to move the chairs around, but I don't want them to be able to lift them off the ground. So I'm going to go ahead and lock Y axis movement on the movement, but I'm going to leave, um, I'm going to leave X and Z open. And then on rotation, the only one I'm happy for them to rotate it on is the green axis. So this one here. So I'm going to go ahead and lock that axis. So now I can move this chair, but I can't accidentally pick it up. I can rotate it, but I can't twist it and I can't scale it. So this is exactly what I'm looking for is, is this sort of this sort of interaction. It limits what the user could do. Now, if I don't want them to move it at all, I could just lock it. And then all they could do is look at it. But in this case, I think it is fine to allow them to move it. So the bureau over there, I don't want them to be able to move it, but I do want them to be able to show and hide it. So I'm going to go ahead and lock that. To summarize, if you disable the option, it just will not show up in the viewer menu. If you lock it, it'll appear, the user will be able to show and hide it, but they will not be able to move it. And if you leave it unlocked, it'll allow the user to do anything you've left unlocked up here. So if you want to find control, the permissions, you can allow those controls by um, disabling scaling, disabling rotation, disabling movement, but there may be a may enabling movement on a particular access. So this is an old bungalow and it's a work in progress um, and this area of it, the rear area which faces down the garden, we've wanted to improve for a while. So it's got this small dining room area um, which is lovely and it has a view down down the garden which is beautiful um, but that is a wonderful view and we don't get it, we don't get the most out of it. So what we were thinking is we'd like to take that wall down here and you can see where the builders have been in to inspect the structure to see whether that's possible but we'd like to take that wall down so that we can have merged this room and the storeroom next door and take perhaps take these walls down in this place here so the whole area is open plan trying to visualize what that looks like i can kind of get it in my mind but this is where stage it really comes into its own it's allowing us to potentially preview what that looks like so i'm going to go ahead and load the dining room scene and i'm going to put my marker down here where zero zero is just going to wait for that scene to load and so i can position it normally but in this instance i'm going to want to use the marker option so I select marker and i just need to look at the scene and once it's recognized it sometimes you need to get a little bit over it it places the scene exactly where I need it to be placed. So now I'm going to get and put it into viewer mode. So you go to settings, viewer, and at this point you would hand the device off to the other user. So I'm going to just pretend that I am the other user, but you'd hand the device off and they would load in like this and you'd tell them to look at their hand, press start, and then look at the marker.
amazing. Now you can see that the asset panel opens right by them. So if I press the asset panel, this will follow me around and it shows me everything that I have previously set up and left enabled. I can walk over here and take a look at the piano. And if I tap that, it will bring the object here. And it's like, okay, well, I'll hide the piano. And I wanna show the... the bureau. Oh, that looks okay. I have a sky dome turned on, I can actually disable that so I can see what it looks like in the real space. If I want to turn the piano back on. And actually maybe we could have both. It's a bit tight, isn't it? Now, the other option you can do in viewer mode is you can tell them to turn the object bounding box. Anything marked with blue they can move. Anything marked with red, they cannot. So you can see that all of the chairs are movable. And I've got the app set up to select before you're able to move them, which is quite a useful way of doing that. So if I want to say, well, actually, the piano needs to be a bit further around, I can have them position the piano. Maybe they'd want to play looking down the garden and want to know what that looks like. Maybe they'd want that plant in the corner there. We can also swap out the floors. So let's turn off the tile floor and put on the dark tile. I think I prefer the light tile. The other thing we can do is we can actually look at what this looks like from the outside. So we're gonna go ahead and walk down there. Now here you can see the trick that I've done. I've actually put an object out here with the picture of, of our garden. And what's really useful is that it's just a panoramic. It means that when I look out these transparent windows, I'm getting this view um, rather than um, the view of the walls. But this is what it would look like from outside. So that was viewer mode, um, that's the marker. Any feedback, chuck it in the comments below or go over to our Reddit channel. I'll have the uh, link for that in, in, the, in the video below too. Uh, and any features that you wanna see, let me know. Cheers.